Pathology of gangrene. First of all, we should know clinical and pathological types of gangrene. This is the first type of gangrene, which is gangrene occur in dry tissues. Gangrene occur in dry tissues uh, without fluid lodging in the tissues, without uh, blood in the tissues. In dry tissues, therefore, it is called dry gangrene. And sure, this dry tissue is not uh, a good culture for bacteria. Therefore, dry gangrene is usually aseptic. A is the negative. Aseptic gangrene. This is the second type of gangrene, which is gangrene in tissues with fluid lodging, fluid containing excessive blood. Therefore, if the tissue is loaded with fluid and the blood, this is called moist gangrene. The moist gangrene may be aseptic without infection, like acute ischemia or chronic ischemia with edema like chronic ischemia with heart failure or venous edema phlegmesia cerula dolens the tissues is loaded with venous blood but there is no infection in acute ischemia or chronic ischemia with edema or venous gangrene. In moist gangrene, moist tissue is a good medium for corrosive bacteria. Therefore, very common that moist gangrene will be septic gangrene. The sepsis may be primary septic. What's meant by primary septic? Sepsis is the cause of the gangrene, which may be a specific organism, like cholesteridia of gas gangrene, or non-specific infection, cause gangrene. The commonest type of gangrene is non-specific organism, staph or strept or any organism, affecting the foot in diabetic patients which is diabetic infective gangrene. Diabetic infective gangrene is typical example for moist septic gangrene with non-specific organism. Any organism will produce the gangrene. The gangrene may be secondary septic. Moist gangrene occur and this moist gangrene is infected. Therefore, if secondary infect, infected moist gangrene, it is a secondary septic gangrene. Therefore, the gangrene may be dry gangrene, which is usually aseptic because the dry tissue is a very bad medium for growth of bacteria, or moist. Gangrene in tissues loaded with fluid and blood. The moist gangrene may be aseptic, without infection, as gangrene, early gangrene in acute ischemia, venous gangrene, or ischemia, chronic ischemia with edema fluid. But much, much more common that moist gangrene is septic because the tissues is a very good medium here in moist gangrene for growth of bacteria. And the septic moist gangrene may be primary septic in which infection is the cause of the gangrene and may be specific as gas gangrene or non-specific as diabetic food. Secondary septic moist gangrene Moist gangrene occur 
and aseptic at first, but secondary infected by any organism. These are the types of gangrene. Um, moist gangrene may occur in uh, internal organs, acute mesenteric vascular occlusion, subiro mesenteric or inferior mesenteric, suddenly embolus occludes the subiro mesenteric, leading to gangrene of a small intestine. And this is acute ischemia with intestine loaded with blood and edema fluid, therefore it's a moist gangrene. And sure, the lumen of the intestine is very rich in microorganism. And therefore, this moist gangrene is sure moist septic gangrene. What are the sequelae of uh, gangrene? The sequelae of gangrene according to the size of the gangrene. If a small gangrenous part, a small gangrenous part, like example, if gangrene occur in very small area here, few millimeters of gangrene, these dead tissues are eroded by phagocytosis. Therefore, spontaneous disappearance and absorption of a small gangrenous part a few millimeters of gangrene but if um, large gangrenous part in dry gangrene in large gangrenous part separation of the gangrene occur and separation of gangrene in dry gangrene is different from separation of moist gangrene in dry gangrene a line appear on the skin, marking the dead tissue from the healthy tissue. This line which marks the dead tissue from the healthy tissue is called line of demarcation. It is a line on the skin. Then at this line of demarcation, granulation tissues from the healthy tissue start to grow. Granulation tissue appear from the skin and start to grow distally to separate the dead skin from the healthy skin. Then granulation tissue, tissue grow from the subcutaneous tissue to separate the dead subcutaneous tissue. Granulation tissue, tissue grow from uh, the muscles and the bones to separate the dead tissues from the healthy tissues. This line on the skin, which marks the dead from health tissue, is line of demarcation. But ulcer appear here, ulcer appear in the skin, in the subcutaneous tissue, in the muscles, in the bone. This line of ulceration is called the line of separation, like this. Here, an ulcer appears in the skin, and the ulcer becomes deep, deep, more deep, to separate the deep tissues from dead to healthy tissue. Sure, we should notice that this line of ulceration and the line of separation is by aseptic granulation tissue. Aseptic, without infection. And in dry gangrene, the vascularity of the muscles is better than the skin. And vascularity of bone is better than muscles and skin. Therefore, the line of separation appear in the skin here. Then the line of separation in the muscle occur here. And the line of separation occur here. Therefore, there is a golden rule said that 
in dry gangrene, separation by aseptic ulceration, which is more distal in the deeper brains, more distal in the muscles, more distal in the bones, etc., leaving a conical shaped stump like that. And here, separation is completed. Here, ulceration in the skin, distal in the subcutaneous tissue, distal in the muscles and bone, leading to conical shaped stump. This separation, this is the separation in dry gangrene. By aseptic granulation, which is more distal in the deeper brain, leaving a conical shaped stump. This is totally different in case of separation of moist gangrene. If there is moist gangrene, the moist gangrene, the separation occur by suburation. The infection, if infection here, the suburation will dissolve the skin, dissolve the muscle, dissolve the, the bones at the same level, leading to separation occur at the same level in the skin and the muscle and the bone, and here the line of demarcation in the same level of the line of separation if occur. While here in dry and green, the line of separation is more distal than the line of demarcation. We said that if a small gangrene is part, absorption, spontaneous absorption by phagocytosis. If large gangrene is part, separation. Separation in dry gangrene by aseptic granulation, while in moist gangrene by septic granulation and suburation. There is a third possibility and the third sequelae, which is this. Gangrene may be fatal. Why? Due to, especially in moist gangrene, due to infection. Massive severe infection in moist gangrene, leading to severe toxemia, bacteremia, septicemia. Severe pain may lead interfere with sleep, leading to exhaustion. And sure, bacteremia, septicemia, bioemia may affect the heart, leading to myocarditis, brain, encephalitis, kidneys, leading to bilateral renal destruction and nephritis, leading to this, especially in moist gangrene. Dry gangrene is extremely rare to be fatal. Actually, not fatal in dry gangrene, but in moist gangrene, due to infection, bacteremia, septicemia, toxemia, bioemia, associated myocarditis, encephalitis, nephritis, may leading to multiple organ failure and death. This is the pathology of gangrene. Thank you for good listening.